Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Jim Carrey and Sonic the Hedgehog and, and all of that. And this is going to be kind of, a, I guess, a good news video. Yeah, we're going to do some positivity for once. Uh, we had two rather draining videos earlier today dealing with negativity. And uh, we do want to talk about some positive things that are going on. Uh, Jim Carrey seems to be a lot happier these days since Sonic the Hedgehog came out and since he was proven wrong. He actually which he was, admitted to. Yeah, he admitted to, which is actually pretty cool. We're going to talk about this. Uh, he was uh, raffling off a car to the employees working on Sonic 2, and people said he's got a little bit of a spring in his step. Mm -hmm. And this this after Jim Carrey said uh, before that he was, uh, you know, didn't, didn't really agree with the changes to Sonic the Hedgehog. He said, you know, the studio shouldn't cave to fan pressure, but they did. They changed the design of Sonic. The movie wound up making ridiculous money mm -hmm. for a video game movie. Uh, and especially in February. And it was the last movie we saw before the pandemic. But, um, you know, he seems to be a lot happier these days. So yep. Sonic brings joy to everybody. Including Jim Carrey. Including Jim Carrey. So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We're over 187,000 subs. Woohoo! Uh, thank you for the support. We do talk about pop culture. We talk about video games. We talk about whatever interests us that day. And we've been chronicling the Sonic the Hedgehog situation mm -hmm. because it was an example of studios listening to fans, getting it right, and being financially rewarded for it. Yes. Imagine that. So, yeah, Jim Carrey, you know, to, to backpedal here a little bit, when they announced that they were going to redesign Sonic the Hedgehog. Everybody and their brother lost it over that. I mean, everybody. I don't care. It wasn't a political issue. Everybody was like, you know, this is bad. I <laughs> think most, most everybody was that this is bad. Yeah. So he said that uh, now he's called the redesign a good thing after criticizing it. Uh, he did criticize it. He said, he, oh my God, he spoke to Fox News. Uh, Carrie said it turned out to be a co-op where everybody was in on the creation. I think everybody felt good about ultimately because uh, Jeff Fowler had no ego involved at all. He just went, these people grew up with it. It's so important to them that we get it right. And I think it was a much better movie because of it. And people appreciate the fact that they did go out of their way to make sure they got it right. Yeah, yeah. So now fast forward and uh, we'll talk about the car situation here, but this is coming from comicbook.com. You sent this over to me mm -hmm. today. Uh, he gave away a brand new car on the set of Sonic 2. It was a Chevy Blazer, technically, but yes. A Chevy Blazer? So it wasn't like you get a car and you get no, a car. No, no, no. So in Vancouver, uh, he was, he basically what he did was, it was a reward for cast and crew. Mm -hmm. He, I think that was a raffle or something. And so, yeah, raffled off. And uh, one of the camera operators won the, the new car. It yeah. was valued about $40,000. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know what they should have done to decide who gets the car? Instead of raffling it off, they should have had a, uh, a high score contest on Sonic the Hedgehog. No, see, that's not, that wouldn't be <laughs> as fair, though, in his, in his mind, I'm sure. Yeah. Because not everybody can play that. Well, you should learn. No, I'm, <laughs> yeah. no that's actually pretty cool of him to do. Um, so they talk about how ever since the first movie got off the ground, the beloved comedian has been on an upswing. A sequel got announced straight away, and it looks like they're getting Knuckles right. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks uh, pretty good. It does look pretty good. And people were excited to hear it. Carrie was one of the voices worried when the main character basically had to be redesigned from the ground up after the internet absolutely crushed the design. Yeah, it was all over. Most, most everyone hated it. Yeah. So this is, this is pretty cool. This is what James Marsden said. He said he noticed that Jim Carrey was a pretty happy camper. Um, James Marsden said, uh, talked about how lucky the production was to have Jim Carrey on set. The comedian doesn't just accept any role, so it's a true honor to get a hold of him. Yeah, he is pretty picky. Actually, he's been kind of uh, on the down low for the last couple. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he hasn't really been doing a lot. I mean, he probably doesn't have to because the guy's got so much right. money. But, uh, you know, he hasn't. So I was surprised when they said he was going to be in Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I was like, well, what? Jim Carrey in Sonic the Hedgehog? He does a pretty good job, actually. He did. I just hope that the next movie we get, like, Proper Robotnik, bald, bushy, bushy mustache. Well, they kind of hit it at the end of the last Oh, yeah, at the one. end of it, they did. Yeah. yeah, so I think we will. And and I think he can pull it off. Um, I believe, I don't know if I'm supposed to say, said James Marsden, as, me, uh, as many as they want to make, uh, for how many movies they're going to make. Yeah, that's my somewhat vague answer. It's a good group of people, and it was so much fun to see Jim Carrey enjoying himself again. I think it was his second biggest opening weekend of all of his movies. I was kind of amazed at that statistic. Uh, he had this big smile on his face and he was hugging everyone. It just felt like such a cool thing. 
And he said, uh, I grew up and was in high school emulating him and watching him on in Living Color doing his thing. We used to watch him in Living Color, as, too. As were we. Uh, it gives you an indication of how old we are. <laughs> For him to take a little break from the business and come back with the Showtime show, and then this, to chew the scenery with his amazing ways and just have fun doing it again was a real joy for me because he's always been inspiration. It was just fun to see. He's putting his arm around everyone and going, man, what a great ride. I can't think of any better people to be experiencing this kind of success with. That's awesome. That's very that different. That makes me happy. I mean, it's so nice to just be happy about something. Yeah. Gosh, I forgot what it was like. Yeah, it's it's such a, a different Jim Carrey because he was kind of a downer. When, I, you know, I got to wonder if he was like, he gave his all to the movie and then he, he saw the fans angry about it but that, like that was outside of his control he's probably like oh god it's because of the fans this movie's gonna bomb and everybody's gonna be like oh mm-hmm. jim carrey was in the song well, they, they, they hadn't could've. listened if they hadn't listened and moved and pushed forward it would have no question yeah so forty thousand dollar chevy blazer rs um should have been blue oh i think it's cool should've it's very blue. no it's very robotnik it is. That looks like, that's like, why you probably did it. But I just love hearing that, you know, that he that he's having a good time, that it did so well for him. That he was he was big enough to admit that he was wrong. Yeah. Um, I remember that was big news because he was one of the ones that like, well, you shouldn't, you know, let the fans dictate. And then he said, Oh my gosh, it was a better movie because of it. And, you know, and the fact that he's just he just makes sure he gives back to the people around him. And, you know, it, it just it's just nice. It's just a nice story. Whether you like Jim Carrey or not, the fact that you know, it, it, he was doing well. It was doing well. He was giving a car away. People were very happy working on this movie, which is kind of a 180 from other movies you hear about. Yeah, I mean, that that is a, a definitely a difference with this movie is it seems like most of the people involved in it now, I mean, I don't know what it was like, you know, when they first unveiled the designs, they might have even had the, like the, the special effects people. I'm like, what the hell? Well, they were told not to do that. And Sega, they did it anyway. Sega was even like, this isn't going to work, guys. You don't know the Sonic fans. This isn't going to work. Any fandom. It's like if you change things too drastically, you're going to lose your fans. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I don't know how many times, maybe Paramount, you know, they might have learned a very painful lesson because the Transformers movies uh, had a bunch of backlash and they they saw diminishing returns movie after movie like people started to check out you know more and more after each movie star trek. uh yeah star <laughs> yes. trek but you know by the time paramount got it right and in my opinion bumblebee actually got it right at that point people had already completely yeah, checked gone. out transformers it was right yeah. so you lost your chance because you, you went under this hype and listened to the wrong people and the fans told you at transformers they didn't like it and you guys pushed through anyway and, you know, it, it, you got what you got. And and in this case, they, they listened, they backpedaled, and they fixed it. Um, and, you know, because normally what happened is the movie would fail, and they blame the fans. Yeah. It's not our fault. It's because you're all istophobic, whatever. And it's not because we done effed up and should have listened to, to Sega and should have listened to the fans. Yep. Um, but even mainstream media. Now, uh, this is what really irritated us about Sonic the Hedgehog was we had the typical blogs. You would expect the Mary Sue and BBC even was coming out. And they were trying to make this a political thing. Basically, the alt-right fans were were uh, demanding these changes and they were trying to tank birds of prey. I remember when the, the, the backlash for Sonic hit. And it was not it was not a political thing at all. Everybody, I mean, it didn't matter if you were, you know, right leaning, left leaning, in the middle, you know, we're from another country where you don't even follow American politics, like most of the world. Um, everybody, like, universally hated it. There's a few people that liked it, I'm sure, but the majority, I'll say the majority of people universally hated it. It wasn't even about politics. Yeah. Um, so they changed the designs, they pushed the movie back. Uh, the movie, no, I mean, it helps that the movie was decent. You know, it was pretty by the numbers, but it, it could have been a train wreck. You know, they didn't deviate too far from from Sonic. Now, they have a whole, like, another origin story and all that stuff. But um, it was decent. There was enough, you know, fan service in there. Uh, not enough not enough footage of Sonic's feet for some people. But they did get they did get <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog in there. I thought that was pretty that funny. Was funny. I didn't expect that. But uh, they avoided a box office disaster. Or even Variety said that... Uh, you know, it was, it, they were shocked. It had an opening day weekend of $58 million. What was funny to me was uh, a, a lot of the blogs were in agreement that his design looked terrible and he didn't change it, right? Yeah. And then, you know, when it was going to come up against Birds of Prey, and it was clearly going to kick Birds of Prey's ass, then all of a sudden, well, it's because fans, and they gave into fans because they're toxic and fans, and, and you should go see Birds of Prey and not yeah. Sonic and everything else. It just, it just, that had more to do with it than I think anything. 
So this is Paramount's president of distribution, Chris Aronson, said, I can't remember another time there's been a reset, but it was incredibly smart of everyone involved to listen to the fans and give them what they want. And I have to wonder, you know, if this wasn't a result of, again, Paramount not listening with movies like Transformers. Mm -hmm. uh, they had, at that point, they had a lot of backlash with Star Trek, you know, and if they were like, let's just, just one time, we have a brand new franchise, we still have time to fix this one. Get off on the right foot. Get off on the right foot. Uh, and and they did it and they were rewarded for it financially. And we kind of saw this with um, HBO too. Now they had already put the wheels in motion for the, the Snyder Cut. But I think the mentality was the same thing. Like would Justice League have performed better at the box office if it were the original version of Justice League? Mm -hmm. Short we'll answers. Never, we'll never know for sure. I, I don't. Four hours, no. No, <laughs> no, not four hours. Two different movies, possibly, but four hours, hell no. Um, but still, it does seem like in some ways they're they're willing to listen. But every time that there's like one step forward, we've got the media, and then they push it three steps back. Yeah, you can like again, as we always say, you can track most of the the, the visionary bullshit back to the media. Uh, they they perpetuate it. They create it. Yeah. So we even had the BBC. They had a blog post out there where they were like, you know, the entitled fans demand that Sonic be changed. And and also they don't like Doctor Who. It's like, well, at the end of the day, it's the fans, the audience that determines whether or not your your stuff succeeds or fails. So, yeah, you kind of have to kiss their Doctor ass. Doctor Who didn't listen. And look where they are. Yeah. And they listened about Sonic. And look where they are. And now Jim Carrey is like all happy to be working again, working on this stuff. And he he apologized and backpedaled yeah. and admitted he was wrong. And now he's giving away cars to the cast and crew, you know, to try to, you know, just to try to keep that positivity going and to show him how thankful he is to everyone and hugging everybody and is just super happy, you know, the whole way around. And I think that, you know, we need more of that. Yeah. And less of the media bullshit. If we had more people show up for work excited to be there and happy to be there and happy and to make, make other people happy. And I get like, look, there are a lot of miserable people in Hollywood. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, it shows you can watch a movie and you can tell on some level, like these people actually got along well in real life. You know, it seemed like it was a pretty good working environment. Uh, you look at the original Star Wars trilogy compared to even the, the prequels and especially the sequels. And it seemed like they actually had like a family bond going on mm -hmm. there. Uh, and it shows, it shows on camera, you get the chemistry. It, 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 it comes through. So it's good for everybody. You know, everybody's happy. We want people to be happy. We they, want fans to be happy. Everybody make money, make good stuff. I think in general, everybody just wants more news like this, you know, yeah. with more Hollywood like this, where they listen and they try to do their best and just make good movies, make good movies. Um, more, you know, positive things. I, I think the world's full of negativity as it is. Um, and what we, people are like, here's a negative. No, we call out the negativity. That's the difference. Because these media outlets and Twitter, they just keep, if it goes away and people are starting to get along again, like the Mandalorian, they have to go in there and cause shit. You yeah. know, Luke Skywalker's back, hurry, make fun of the fans, you know. This whole this behavior is unacceptable. Even though, even if you want to do your own take on something, and some of the fans don't like it, instead of like you know attacking them right off, maybe try to meet in the middle and you know build bridges, not burn them. And and they're so they've been burning and burning and burning. Um, it's so nice to see you know something that wasn't burnt down. Yeah, and, and like I said, you know, uh, you know, you were talking getting off on the right foot and all that. And I, I remember back in the day when you had a list stars, it was news back then to show them having fun, being good people. Even if they were miserable son of a bitches mm -hmm. off camera, the public perception was, wow, these are good people doing good things, having fun. And now it's a bunch of backbiting, a bunch of chastising, a bunch of preaching, a bunch of, you know, and people don't have the warm, fuzzy or feelings. It's why the Oscars. things that's not you know? politically motivated. Yeah. You know, why can't we just have people just do good things because it's the right thing to do? And you don't see that anymore. No. You know, in, in, in this world is so open for positivity and needs it. I just, you know, I mean, if you have the power to use it for good, use it for good. Be happy. Try to make people around you happy. I, I'm just tired of this bullshit. Anyway. I think a lot of people are. So That's why, that's why we're here. That's why the Oscars fails. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're tired of it. We're going to wrap it up, right? Yep. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.